complicated because I'm going to read quite a few scriptures since kids are in the back. We are in a series called Miracles in the Gospel of John. And the main scripture we have used is John 20, verse 31. John says, the one who hung with him for almost three and a half years, the one who was closer to Jesus, the one who said, disciple whom Jesus loved. He said that Jesus did so many miracles. If we was to write it, the whole world will not be able to contain in the form of books. But by the grace of God, by the help of God, I am writing only seven miracles. And the purpose is so that you believe Jesus is Christ, Messiah, and the Savior. So that is our main point. First miracle we saw when he turned water into wine, and we call that Jesus who has power over shame. S-H-A-M-E. Shame is opposite of glory. Somebody need to write that down. Shame is opposite of glory. Glory in the highest. That's the season. Jesus came so you don't have to be shamed. All right, that was the first message. Second one, we talk about Jesus when he heals the, uh, the official government, official son. And we came to the conclusion that Jesus has power over distance. Meaning, once he spoke the word, go on by your own business. So once you pray, go on by your own business. They're not set in wondering and worrying. If you're going to pray, don't worry. If you're going to worry, all right. So that was message number two. Third message was when we talk about the man who was sick, paralyzed for 38 years. And we came to the conclusion that Jesus has power over sickness, disease, it doesn't matter how long it is. But at the same time, we came to the conclusion that miracles have different effects. First miracle, the disciple believed. Second miracle, huh? the royal man and his whole household believed. But in the third one, that was the beginning of hostility towards Jesus. So instead of worshipping Jesus, the man decided to join the Jews and start the hostility towards Jesus. All right. Number four. Today, we're going to talk about Jesus who has power over lack. All right. Since we have enough time, and ambassador people are not hungry, so uh, <laughs> I love my ambassador folks. So I'm going to read. This is the miracle which all four gospel people write. Certain miracles only one or two will write. This is the miracle in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. We're going to go in the John, but it is important we read it, Matthew, Mark, Luke about this one, then we go to John and we break it down. I'm going to read a whole lot, so stay, sit down. Let's go to Matthew 14. Now, if you see, and again, my ministry is to always open the Bible and always expound and do the expository study. 
one at a time. So if you read John 14, 1 through 11, you're going to find out what happened before this miracle. Matthew 14. Okay. What happens here is Herod kills John the Baptist. It is not purpose. To talk about it, you should know how, why, what, where. Okay. So now, Jesus is six months younger. John is the forerunner preparing the way for his coming. How will it affect you if the forerunner is there? Not only that, and he is your cousin. <laughs> Jesus got the news. Your forerunner, the voice in the wilderness, the spirit of Elijah upon him, he just got beheaded. How would you feel? See, we just read, the, we just start reading. He paid the no, like I always have told you, read before, read after, figure it out what is going on. And so he heard the message. Let's go. Verse 13. And when Jesus heard of it, heard of what? John, be just gone. He departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard of thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion towards them, and he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him. You know, Jesus was preaching all day long, y'all. So don't tell me I got 30 minutes. <laughs> if you want me to multiply, uh, let me preach all day. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place, and a time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into villages and buy themselves some whatever that word is. There is no quick trip. <laughs> there is no dashing. There is no Walmart. And Jesus said to them, they don't need to depart. Give you them to eat. <laughs> and they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. By the way, this is a springtime. And if you read John 5, when the nobleman came, there was the feast. So now it is about six months has passed. Springtime, there is grass. No stores. When you say desert place, don't think it is sand and dry. No, 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 no. Desert place meaning there is no quick trip. There is no Walmart. Uh, like North Tulsa. Just a thought. <laughs> it's going to change. Don't stay home on watch night. I'm going to prophesy. The Lord's, never mind, come on and watch night. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. When you jacked up, sit down. Don't be staying up all night pacing. Woo, 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 woo. Wear your carpet out. Go sit down. Look at your friend next to you. Sir. Sit down. <laughs> Look at on the other side. I say, sit down. <laughs> See, you, you you want a miracle, but you jacked. Worried about all I all. No, you want a miracle, be still. And know that I am God. I am large and I'm in charge. I'm in control. <laughs> That's how Jesus. Yeah. 
Not only that. If there's 20,000 people. And hungry. You think you have a problem with 120, 180? <laughs> have you ever dealt with hungry folks? Cuss for, cuss you out. <laughs> and Jesus said, hold up. You, you, you all don't know. I'm trying to give you a miracle, but the miracle happens when there is a order. Yeah. Come on, folks, I'm doing a better job in teaching you. See, you jacked up because you ain't got your miracle, but I'm teaching you how to get a miracle. Sit down. Get it in order. Fifties, hundreds, fifties, hundreds. Huh? You can't come here with a basket and all of them jump on you. Oh, Lord Jesus. No, you don't go like that. God is a God of order. He took five loaves and two fishes, took up into heaven, blessed, break. Sounds like communion, don't it? And gave the loaves to his disciple and disciple to the multitude. Here is the bottom line. The miracle did not happen in the hands of Jesus. He gave it to them. Miracle happened in their hands. Miracle. Miracle. Oh, let me talk to you. Miracle happened not for them. He gave it to Peter. And if my homeboy, Peter, can have a self-control, <laughs> not <laughs> but he gave away, that's how miracle happens. I'm teaching you better than you are learning. Huh? Our problem is this. When God gives you, you gobble up. Miracle don't happen that way, baby. Miracle happens. Oh. There is somebody more hungrier than you. <laughs> Abraham, Genesis 12. I will make you a blessing. He didn't say I'm going to bless you. Your problem is this. Lord bless me. That's a stupid ignorant prayer. When he said Lord bless me. is a selfish prayer. You have to pray God make me a blessing. Because you can trust me. Bless me, and it's going to go out to someone else first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. The one who is in need worse than you, that's the kingdom. See, because you don't know. You say, what does it mean? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. I tell you what, kingdom of God is the one who is worse than you. In 45 years, I have never thought of that until now. He gave. And Peter said, damn, I just gave. When you give, you're not cutting yourself short. Two fishes and looking to heaven, he blessed them and he gave the loaves to disciples, disciples to the multitude, and they did it all. And they were all filled. And they took up the fragment that remained, 12 baskets. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. That's how the Jews counted. They counted by men. Because he's the head and the wife and the kid. So, man, woman, and they believe in at least having five kids. Blessed is the man whose quiver is filled. Quiver had five arrows. So you got 25,000 people. Not only 5,000. 5,000 men. And, it, and look at here. On Monday night, we have seven men. And 30 women. 
So if you go by that statistics, 5,000 men, so there is at least 20,000 women. Never mind. Uh, we, we're, going to find, <laughs> we're going to figure that out when we go to heaven. Okay, let's go to Mark, the sixth chapter. Keep going to your right. Mark the sixth. All right. Thirty-four. Mark six thirty-four. And when Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, and he was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. See the difference? Matthew says he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion, and he healed them all. Mark says, wait a minute. He's looking at the same thing from a different angle. Matthew says, oh, he healed them all, all day long. He didn't have time to rest. Didn't have time to eat. Because he was moved with compassion. But his disciples, they were irritated of the multitude. Question is this. How would you handle it? Well, because of the people, I don't get to sleep. Welcome to the ministry. Because of the people, I didn't got to may not miss up my lunch. Well, welcome to the ministry. What is it? Ministry always put people before you. That's what a minister is. Matthew, he healed them. Mark, he said he taught them because they were sheep not having a shepherd he began to teach them many things and when the day was now far spent he disciples came see bottom line is this disciple didn't like people every time you read about disciples they always want to throw everybody away you remember that woman who came oh Jesus throw her away they're bothering hey, ho 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 Woman was not even talking to the disciple. See what talking to Jesus. But it is the little fools. Oh, pastor is fine. Oh, you can see pastor now. I was talking to one of my daughter here uh, before the service. She had an issue. She was sick in the hospital. I said, why didn't you uh, text me in Africa? Oh, I didn't want to be bothering. Huh? I carry my phone anytime. And if it is something, you better text me. Don't text me when you're having a bad day. <laughs> I told you what to do during the bad day. <laughs> but if you're in a hospital, you better, never mind. All I am saying that ministers, please be available. Huh? When people get on your nerves, that's a time to resign. <laughs> Department heads! When they get on your nerves, time to step down. You are department head because of the people. I'm a pastor because of the sheep. Few goats, but because of the sheep. I got to keep it real, y'all. <laughs> and some wolves in a sheep's clothing. And they come. This is this desert place. Now time is far. far. You know what? They were more hungry than the people were. And I can imagine uh, they had a meeting. Uh, by the way, I learned that from Pastor Robert Morris. So let me give him the glory. This is not my original, but hey, once I talk, it's mine. <laughs> so he says, 
they had a meeting. Peter, James, John, and all of them. Hey, you hungry? You know I'm. <laughs> he been talking all day. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a seven sermon series. Why is he teaching all in one day? <laughs> Think how these jokers are thinking. I know you're teaching good, but should I have to teach all seven in one day? So they came while Jesus is talking, teaching and all this. Jesus. Jesus is talking. Oh, uh, Jesus. Awesome series, awesome. You know how we are. Powerful word, Jesus. It's not us, Jesus. Damn, he's hungry. <laughs> Damn, he's irritated. He just said, he kept on teaching. He said, uh, good. Damn, he's hungry. You feed them. <laughs> and the kingdom of God. See how smooth Jesus is? If you think they have a problem, you feed them. Not only they have a problem, you know what the problem is. You give them food. And Peter said, they work out like I had thought. <laughs> they work out like I had thought. He kept on teaching. He kept on teaching. He said, what are we going to do, man? I'm hungry. So Andrew said, well, we ain't got, but oh, this little boy. Five crackers. Two sardines. Jesus. We don't obey you. But look here. Five crackers. Two sardines. 20,000 people. And you told us to feed them. Jesus. Yeah, you know. Jesus had enough. Do you know how Jesus get ticked? Peter, bring it. Tick. Peter brought it. Father, I thank you. You always hear me. These people are bothering me. Not, not, not the multitude. You know, the one I chose. No, 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 no. Not the one I chose. The one you gave me. Thank you, Lord. Peter, come here. Peter gives you Andrew. Yes, you all go feed them. But before that, let them sit down. So they all sit down. That's how the miracle happened. And Jesus kept on teaching. Kept on teaching. All I am saying, folks, always put someone else before you. <laughs> Don't go to Jesus and say, they seek. Heal them! They're depressed. Bring your joy. They're tired. Give them strength through the grace of God. Say, I have, I have all, all that they need. I need to just give it out. And start complaining. And stop complaining. And stop complaining. No, no, say like that. Stop Send them away that they may go into the country. Well, you already know. Give them to eat. And that's how they multiplied it. All right. Let's go to Luke. We're coming to John here in a minute. Luke 9. See, this is what I always tell you. Read everywhere so you can get all different accounts. Like in an accident. Somebody saw from here. Somebody saw from here. Somebody saw from here. They're describing the same accident, but with a few different angles. That's what is going on here. Look the ninth chapter. Verse 12. And when the day began to weary away, then came 12. Say it unto him, and the multitude away. It's not the people who is tired, it is them. And you know how it is. He always want to blame somebody else. What would you like to eat? You know what you want? I always do that to Sister Lee, but I always get in trouble. 
Do you know how I want to eat? So I ask her, uh, are you hungry? <laughs> Why can't you just come clean as a, you know, okay. Human nature. Human nature. Send the multitude away and they may go into the towns and country round about and lodge and get victual. What do you mean by the victual in English? What do you mean? Get a burger and fries and a coke to go with it. For we are here in a desert place. But he said unto them, Poof, give them to eat. And they said, we have, you already know, make them to sit down. It's the same story. And they eat and they are. Let's go to John 6 now. That's where we, uh, I want to go. And we go home. John the 6th chapter. By the way, don't stay home tomorrow night. We're going to come and pray. John the 6th chapter. Some of you need to start coming. So you can pray for somebody else, not you only. 1 through 15. And after these things, you know, after these things, John the Baptist beheaded. Jesus is sorrowful. He has pain. He has trouble. But ministry is. You forget your trouble and bless someone else. That's the ministry. But if it is all about you, you are in a wrong business, my man. And this thing, Jesus went over the Sea of Tiberias, which is uh, uh, Sea of Tiberias. A great multitude followed him because they saw his miracle, which he did on them, that were diseased. Folks follow for so many reasons. Later on, you're going to find out. We will see uh, Sunday after next, or maybe in January. Uh, you just say that, oh, you follow me because I paid you. Bunch of lazy folks don't want to work. Huh? Oh, they got a free ticket. <laughs> Let's go to church. Let the church take care of it. Oh, that's a different message. <laughs> Jesus went up into a mountain and there he sat down with the disciples. Remember, he was tired. He was hungry. They didn't have time. But he went and sat down. Because the Passover, the feast of the Jews was near, meaning they are up in Galilee and all the Jews are required to start going down south toward Jerusalem because everybody was required to go to Jerusalem. So there is a lot of traffic on that highway. Verse 5. And man, Jesus lifted his eyes and saw a great company come unto him. He said unto Philip, See? John is talking from a different angle. In here, we see disciples came and said, let them go. So maybe disciples came and told him, Jesus said, you all feed them. So John goes ahead and say that, I don't know why he asked Philip. Why didn't he ask Judas? Just a thought. Judas was a traitor. Why he didn't ask Judas? I don't know. When I go to heaven, I'm going to ask Jesus. Why he didn't ask Judas? So don't ask me. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he knew he was a thief. <laughs> and Philip was the administrator. Hello? You know, you have a treasurer and you have an administrator. Administrator control. Anyway, when shall we buy bread? Watch it. Underline the word. When's. God, Lord, it's, it, it's, a, it's a where. I'm going to buy, get my new living translation. Living, huh? it's a, Jesus said, where? Say where. where. Okay. Where shall we buy bread that this may eat? Meaning, Jesus wasn't broke like some people say. You cannot travel with 70 people. And people like Peter who like to eat five times a day. So he's asking Philip. Why is he asking Philip? Here's the answer. And this he said to prove him. 
for he himself knew what he would do. It is a test. When Jesus asks you a question, it is a test. Huh? Philip should have said, uh, look here, we are in a chapter 6, Jesus. Oh, you didn't, you didn't catch that. <laughs> Jesus, we are in chapter 6. I was in chapter 2 when they didn't have wine. I was in chapter 4 when the guy was sick. Huh? I was there. I mean, what? This would be like the prophets. Thou knowest it, Lord. Let me ask you, the smooth way. When God asks you a question, just play dumb. <laughs> That's the safest way. Don't try to get in an argument. Let me, no, 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 no. Philip tried to get in an argument. No, no, no. Like uh, uh, Ezekiel 37 or 36. Ezekiel. All these dry bones, shall they live? Thou knowest it. <laughs> See the smooth way to get out? <laughs> Philip should have read Ezekiel. Philip. Because he knew what he was going to do. Why? He's a good shepherd. He's a true shepherd, full of compassion. Philip answered, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. He said, look here, we, we take a one year salary and buy bread for all them people. Uh -huh. They may get a little. <coughs> and while the conversation is going on, remember I told you, it is Peter and Andrew and James and all of them have come as a gang. Peter asked, uh, Jesus asking Philip, so Andrew said, oh, okay. So he found a little boy. And my dad, my father, when he was teaching me in 1960, when I was not even saved, I remember what he said. He said the miracle was to get a food from the little boy. <laughs> See, you all preach about 6,000, 5,000 all day. My daddy said, no. Huh? Try to get a food out of the little boy who be carrying all day long in supper time. But see, little children heard Jesus. It is better. Let a kid obey God better than some. I didn't say that. Write all the letters to. So he gave. The little boy gave. Ooh. I'm going to see the little boy and shake his hand when I go to heaven. Mm, 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 mm. There's a little lad here which has five barley loaves. Ah, barley loaves. Not a wheat. Rich people eat wheat. The poor farmers, the poor people eat barley. Huh. So little boy, poor or no poor, I know how it works. He gave. So let me tell you something, folks, keep on giving. It's a five dollar, keep on giving. Don't worry about it. Well, I ain't got no five million. You won't. But your five dollars might turn into a five million in about 50 years. Oh. See, you got you to be smooth when I'm talking to you. What did I say? How many years? Me and my wife tithing for 42 years. Did you hear me? 42 years. Giving, giving, giving. Sometimes we give cash without the receipts. Huh? 
and it took 42 years to get the cars paid, the house paid. Uh, 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 yeah. Amen. But you give a tithe and skip it two, three times, and, and then and he said, <laughs> the Lord lied. Lord didn't lie. You the one who is, oh, never mind. Oops, there it is. So when I was in Nigeria, I was talking to the youth over there, and I told them, God is not a microwave God. God is a crock pot God. Tweet that. If you're going to tweet that, tweet that. This young generation need to know. Get already frozen food ready. Put it in a microwave for three minutes and scream, hurry up. <laughs> That's not how God rolls. God rolls you for 40 years. You keep on tithing. Keep on giving. Keep on smiling. You're hurting, but you bless. You're crying, but you wipe somebody's tears. Huh? You put your hand on somebody's shoulder. You let them know you there, and your day is coming, my friend. As sure as I know, your day is coming. But you don't short-circuit God. Amen. Stay at it. Be faithful. Yes. God doesn't pay one first and fifteen. God don't pay in January like your income tax. I'm not going to have a Christmas in December. I'm going to have it in January. Oh, don't play. When I get money from the, never mind. I don't know about you. I, I'm having good time. And I'm not even tired. I had a good time. Let me finish this. Barley loaves, two small fishes. But what are they among so many? Philip said, everybody will get little. Andrew said, come on now. Come on now. But they both forgot. Jesus knew what he was going to do. Jesus knew what he's going to do. He's going to bless you. He's going to deliver you. And Jesus said, Make them sit down. There you go again. You can't get a miracle with all hollering and screaming. Now there was so much grass in the place, so the man sat down in a number about 5,000. Jesus took the loaves and he gave thanks, distributed to the disciples, and disciples to them that were sat down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they want. Remember, they will not have enough or just a little. El Shaddai. As much as they want. As much as they would. And they were filled. He said unto the disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. And they gathered them together, filled 12 baskets with fragments. Wait a minute, where did the 12 basket came? Where did the 12 basket came? The way the story goes, if you see some old pictures or some uh, whatever, huh, you will see them carrying a basket kind of thing. A, a, it goes circle like this, it goes like this, and every man will carry just like your backpack. Your carry on. So you will have some stuff inside, some food. But of course, they were tired, they were hungry, so they started eating. They had nothing left. Basket empty now. So all the disciples got their own basket that was empty because they ate up all. And they start gathering, they start gathering, they start gathering, and they filled. You mean that might not. Therefore, they gathered them together, filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five body loaves which remained over and above unto them. There you go, the effect. Then those men 
when they had seen the miracle, said, Jesus, be it said, this is the purpose. This is of a truth that the prophet, they should come into the world. And when therefore Jesus perceived they would come to take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into the mountain himself. That's the end of the story. What was the effect of the miracle? They believe that he's a prophet. But there were some, man, let's just make him a king so we don't have to work. We can have a food basket every day. Every day, every day. But you know what? Jesus didn't take a shortcut. He was going to be the king through the cross, not by force. Not by force. Father, I thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus. All these are written so we can learn. We can apply. And we can grow in your grace and your mercy. So, Father, we thank you. For Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we learn one thing. What do we take away from home? Not to worry. Not to stand around. Not to complain. But sit down and trust you and give you. No matter how little it is. To bless someone else. And in doing so. We will be blessed. And my last point, and my dad finished the story like this. And Jesus looked at the little boy. I said, little boy, where do you live? He said, down the hill, down there. Jesus said, let's go to your house. Jesus goes. Twelve disciples. Be full of the baskets. They come. Knock on the door and say, Mama, your boy, five loaves, two fishes. But you know what? Look what Jesus did. And they fill the house of the little boy so they can eat for months. Yeah. Have you thought of that? I'll see you tomorrow night. Thank <laughs> you.